We now bring the Gov Committee on Governmental Operations out of recess for our hearing on uh, the on Department of Records and Information Service. I'd like to welcome the Commissioner, uh, Pauline Toole. The Commissioner of Dora serves as the Chief Archivist, Librarian, and Records Officer for the Mayor, Borough Presidents, and City Council. Today we'll discuss the Department's 2016 preliminary proposed budget, which s includes several new needs. We will also examine operational performance and ideas you may have to improve the Department's efforts to fulfill its mission. We look forward to your testimony. Uh, at this time, I will ask you to uh, affirm, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and to respond to council member questions honestly. Uh, I affirm that I will tell the whole truth and all of the truth and respond honestly to questions. Thank you very much. Please provide your testimony. Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, Council Chairperson Kalos and members of the committee. I am Pauline Toole, the uh, Commissioner of the City's Department of Records and Information Services, commonly known as Doris. I'm joined by key staff, Naomi Pacheco, the Director of Administration, Joseph Mathis, the Budget Director, and Ken Cobb, the Assistant Commissioner, who is at the table with me. Doris is a small agency with a big mission to preserve and make available government information both from the past and the present. The agency has three divisions, the Municipal Records Center, the Municipal Archives, and the Municipal Library. The Municipal Records Management Division develops and enforces the city's record management policies, operates record storage facilities in two locations with a combined capacity of 738,000 cubic feet and provides records management services to 50 city agencies, 10 courts, and the five district attorney offices. The Municipal Archives preserves catalogs and makes available city government's historical records. The earliest records in the archive is a land grant deeding Lady Deborah Moody the tract currently known in Gravesend from 1645. The archives holds collections as varied as the almshouse ledgers dating from 1759 through 1936, the Tweed Ring Court records from the 1870s, World Trade Center materials documenting people's responses to that tragedy, the Brooklyn Bridge engineering drawings from Washington Roebling, and the Central Park drawings. There are more than 200,000 cubic feet of historical records stored at Bush Terminal and 30,000 cubic feet of records in our headquarters at 31 Chambers. Our materials include manuscripts, maps, photographs, architectural models, video, audio recordings, and mayoral gifts. The Municipal Library provides the public with published documents about city government. The holdings include published reports from the separate cities of Flushing and Brooklyn prior to the consolidation of New York City in 1898, and reports issued by various agencies for the past 117 years. Since 2003, the library has operated an online portal for government publications. Our mission is to foster civic life by preserving and providing access to the historical and contemporary records of New York City government to ensure that city records are properly maintained following professional archival and record management practices and to make materials available to diverse communities both online and in person. The preliminary budget provides a total fiscal year 2016 allotment of $5,943,429 for operating costs, which includes personal service funding of $2,755,000 rounding up, and OTPS funding of $3,188,000 also rounding up. The full-time headcount has increased by six from 38 city-funded positions to 44 city-funded positions. The preliminary plan represents an increase of $545,515 from the current spending plan funding. During the past fiscal year, agency funding was increased to support our archival and information services programs, and we expect that funding to continue in the upcoming fiscal year. Doris also received 354,311 in direct grants during fiscal year 2015, which includes $200,000 to administer the local government's record management improvement fund grants, LGRMF, that are allotted to Doris and other city entities. 
37,750 to preserve and index historical Brooklyn maps, 74,853 to continue preserving historical NYPD photographs, and $41,708 to begin preserving historical HPD photographs. During the past 12 months, Doris has undertaken initiatives to better fulfill our charter-mandated responsibilities. Recognizing that the agency had been on the chopping block for the previous 20 years. We have identified areas for improvement and increased efficiency. We've shored up operations and are now either fulfilling our mandates or are on track to do so. For example, you may recall that in last year's testimony, I reported on the status of the government publications portal required by Section 1133 of the Charter. The purpose of the portal is to make current government reports available to the public. You could think of it, as I do, as the online municipal library. A year ago, only 48% of agencies had provided electronic reports for electronic for online posting at some point between 2003 and 2014. And the system for accessing the reports frustrated the end user because only in very rare instances could a person actually download a report. I'm happy to report that the beta version of our publications portal just went live and it's user friendly, easy to navigate and full of reports. We have worked with agencies during the past nine months. There are still are some reports to load, but we have either posted or expect reports in the near future from all mayoral agencies and offices. Additionally, the municipal, municipal librarian is developing a database of every required report so we can remind agency representatives to send the required copies ahead of time. In the next phase of the portal development, we expect to add additional functionality, such as the webcasts of agency board meetings. The portal has been a collaboration between Doris and DoIt. It utilizes open source code and encourages feedback from the user community. DoIt worked with the Doris team to make the portal more robust so it could handle hundreds of requests at one time. In future stages, we will add increased functions such as archived websites. Based on the relaunch of the portal and the Doris mission to provide of government information to the public, we are embarking on a key mayoral initiative, the OpenFOIL platform. The platform shares the same architecture and programming language that was employed in the government publications portal. We will be phasing this portal in during the upcoming fiscal year and will keep you abreast of developments. And of course, we recognize that this effort takes a team and we will again be collaborating extensively with DOIT. In 2014, the newly appointed municipal archivist began assessing the state of the archives and established two overarching goals. One, to ensure that there is a plan to accession all records of historical value and that the plan is followed. And two, to broaden access to city government's historical materials by making them available digitally and in thematic exhibits. The archival staff has been surveying agencies and the offices of elected officials to, de to determine the existence of historical records that may not have been transferred during the past 20 years. We have a long-standing arrangement, by the way, with the LaGuardia Wagner archives to care for the council records, so you're out of the loop on this one this time. We anticipate making all of the collections available online, but realize such an initiative will take several years. In the interim, our online gallery at, at www.archives.nyc showcases the records of New Amsterdam. We will add a gallery of highlights from our newest exhibit, Women Make History, a march through the archives next week. In connection with the Bronx exhibit, we place three satellite exhibits at sites in the Bronx, and we are exploring additional community-based exhibits. We have been working with record managers from several city agencies to review practices and policies and develop a proposal for 21st century records management. Almost all of the existing record retention schedules for city agencies were adopted in the 1980s and must be revised. And of course, technology changed dramatically in the past 30 years, so our new guidelines will reflect that most records have been created digitally and can be retained electronically. The, the recent city storage fire illustrated the negative impact of fire and water on hard copy records. Storing records, particularly those born digital in the cloud, will eliminate this problem.
Our increased headcount of six positions permits us to add skills to fulfill these plans. This includes three new technology hires, a developer and a project manager for the Open Foil project, and a developer who primarily will be working on an online archival system similar to that used by the Smithsonian Institute. We also are hiring two new archivists who will be processing historical collections and a citywide records manager whose critical role is to establish and enforce record management policies for all city agencies. In sum, during fiscal year 2015, Doris put in place the technology, human capital, and other resources to fulfill our charter mandated responsibilities. During the upcoming fiscal year, we will build on this foundation, continue to improve operations, and make our holdings more available to the public. Thank you. Thank you very much for all of your uh, great work. Uh, as you know, I am a strong, uh, well, I, I'm a free Libre and open source software developer and have been a strong advocate. So uh, thank you for your great work on the publications portal and using a free and open source code base. Uh, where is that code base posted and hosted? It's posted on GitHub. Great. So uh, uh, if you, do you happen to know the, the GitHub repo name so that anyone watching online or reading this transcript can find it easily? I do not, I regret to say. But it is linked from the portal. Yes. Uh, and w with regard to the uh, project for the municipal librarian of identifying all the required reports uh, from the agencies, that is an extraordinary task. And I'm sure that as they're working on it, I know that the council has a similar project, if not a similar list. So I think there's a chance for collaboration not only between Doris and do it, but also with the city council. And I do want to thank you for your collaboration on the uh, records portal with our, with the city council, with this committee, and with the uh, borough president, Gail Brewer. Um, with regard to um, the preliminary mayor's management report, uh, for the day I'll be trying to focus on making sure that we are investing in performance enhancements and just looking at it. And throughout the uh, PMMR, I don't know if I have a, if, do we have a spare copy for, uh, do you need a copy? I don't have one with me, but we're fairly familiar with it. Uh, wh what I've noticed is a lot of your targets are represented by asterisks. Uh, so I wanted to ask why, why that is and uh, if we could find actual targets versus the asterisks. What does the asterisk mean? And this is with regard to uh, goal 1A, provide the public and city agencies with access to public records and uh, publications. And uh, for that one, I've got a, a whole lot of asterisks. And uh, along those same lines, in fiscal year 12, there were nearly a quarter million records digitized and preserved. In fiscal year 13, we were at 121,955. Fiscal year 14, 101,033. And for fiscal years 15, which we're currently in, and 16, the goal is once again 260,000. However, for the four months actuals, we are seeing numbers of 45,000 and 46,000, give or take, respectively. So was curious about the challenge you may be facing with regards to digitizing records. Uh, turning this over to Assistant Commissioner Ken Cobb for the response. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Um, the, on your last point, quantity of records digitized, you will see very soon in the indicators, jumping up into the millions, um, literally, because we are in the process of digitizing our 10.5 million uh, vital record collection, the birth, historical birth, death, and marriage certificates. So that number is going to zoom tremendously. So, so in the PMMR, it says uh, 4.6 million for the four-month actual for fiscal year 15, but we weren't sure if that was a mistake. No, it's correct. Okay, so um, to that end, can we re change the target in the PMMR from 260,000 since it appears that you've already exceeded your targets and it seems that 
when you're trying to set targets, we like to set targets we haven't already passed. Right. The pro well, the, the, like some of the targets in the past, they're funded by a special project or a grant, or in this case, this is a special contract. So this year, yes, the number is going to be super high. Next year, it might revert back down again. But we can, we can adjust it, yes. And, and do you have targets for the number of library items available and publication reports acquired and records accessed in municipal archives and walk-in and program attendees at the visitor center? There are not targets for those indicators. The, the ones that uh, you'll do see, we do have targets for several of our indicators, but not every one. So uh, not every indicator. Why not? Uh, this was something we worked at with the Mayor's Office of Operations. I guess the, 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 uh, the feeling was that the, um, the, it was either target that we did not have as much control over. For example, um, let's pick one out here. So, so I guess the question would just be why, why leave them in the PMMR if we're not actually going to do anything about them and we're not going to use them at all? Well, some of them are also targets that are in development. So on the municipal library, the publications that we receive, we're now quantifying the number of online publications we expect to receive. That would be a target. Mm -hmm. And typically, they would count every report issued on paper. We're going to move away from that to the combination of online and hard copy materials received. Um, and then the number in the visitor center, the visitor center and library combination has only been open a very short amount of time. So we need to, we need to work on developing what are the targets. So can, can we hope that by the time we have the mayor's management report, we will actually have targets listed on the, under the measures or see those measures gone because the mayor's decided that these are not things that the administration currently cares about anymore? We certainly can. Thank you. I, I just, I, I, I believe in, we set targets, we set targets beyond where we are already, and then we achieve them, or we say, okay, this is the target, and we actually set it to what we are currently achieving, but um, the MMR becomes a useless document if we don't actually use it. Um, so uh, similarly for providing city agencies, the courts and district attorneys with record storage, retrieval, and retention scheduling services, there are a number of stars there. Agency customer service has no targets whatsoever. Um, currently, and uh, so if those can be set, uh, that would be amazing. And currently, what we're looking at is under fiscal year 12, fiscal year 13, fiscal year 14, they were over 92%, whereas for fiscal year 14, it, the four month actual is at 77%, while fiscal year 15, you actually had 100%. So, um, to the extent we can try to set targets at what they've been, which may be 100% and 90 percent or whatnot, that would be amazing. I think another thing that we're working with the Mayor's Office of Operations on is to figure out what are the best measurements, what are the best metrics for measuring the work of the department. And as we retool operations, some of those will be about engaging communities differently. Um, some of those will be on the online use of our materials, and we will definitely be working with them on that. Great. Um, In terms of uh, storage space, so physical storage space, uh, I guess a quick question would be, what is the current status of physical storage space in the records management division? And similarly, what is the status of the digital storage space? And have we seen any cost savings from uh, that, mm. or from digitizing documents and, and removing them? And then. Similarly, we, I, I run a paperless office. What are you doing with regards to uh, quality control? I found that sometimes I'll ask for something to get digitized, and then the digital version will not actually be as good as the original, and then we'll have to redo it multiple times until we actually get something that stands the test of archival quality. OK, so on the record storage space, um, we have 738 uh, thousand cubic feet that is at two locations, Bush Terminal and um, a warehouse in Maspeth, Queens. And our records management division um, maintains records for a number of city agencies on those at those locations as cited in the testimony. Those are active records, so records that the agencies might need. They have an in they haven't hit the end of their uh, retention period. Um, 
we also have a small record center at White Street that previously was on this off uh, the record center for the office of the mayor and we have recently taken on the responsibility of managing that. I think as our, our initiative for holding digital, born digital records in electronic storage uh, comes to fruition, we will see a decrease in the amount of paper records and the quantity of storage space that the city is going to require is just gonna drop. Um, and that will be done by managing the retention schedules that each agency has so that they uh, conform to more modern practices, which generally means the series of records would be held for shorter periods of time and those that are born digitally would be retained digitally. And you know, the city is committed to adequately storing those documents and those other kinds of records in the cloud. Um, in terms of digitization and having quality control, the program we have digitizing the um, vital records is really quite extraordinary and as all of these you know, millions of images are fed through the machine, there's a team of people operating each machine catching errors and then at the end there are quality control people who look at every image and they are uniformly beautiful. One item just of note, and I had suggested working with our uh, city council's office, but with regard to the reports that you're looking at, uh, the report and advisory board commission from the 2010 charter revision also did similar reports on reporting. So have you reached out to them? Yes, we have that report and we are, um, we used it as a base document and we are filling in the gaps and uh, adding reports that, so we have what we think will be a more comprehensive list. And when it's complete, we'd be totally happy to share it. Great. And post it online as far as that goes, yeah. According to the preliminary management report, the number of records preserved and digitized in 13 and 14 were significantly lower than in 2012. The average time to process requests for records went up dramatically due to a 97% increase as a result of an agreement with the world's largest online resource for family history records. Can you explain why more city funding uh, could be used for record retrieval for a private website? Um, does the world's largest online resource for family history research contribute financially to this partnership? Um, the world's largest genealogical research center um, has the indexes to our records posted on their site. So people who do genealogical research can go to their site and find the location of any number of documents. And then by using those indexes, they can connect with us either online or by snail mail and request copies of the birth, death, or marriage certificate they might be interested in. And um, we provide that document to them, um, many in the mimeograph version, but soon to be in the upcoming beautiful digitized version um, for a fee that is set through a, a process with OMB. Uh, local 11 of 2013, 2003 requires agencies to send all reports done pursuant to a local law or executive order to Doris and to Doris to post such reports. Uh, you testified last year you were undertaking review of agency compliance with local law 11 of 2003. What have been the results of your review? Well, I think it's summed up in the, in the testimony to the extent that, you know, between in that 10 year period, 48% of agencies submitted some documents. Sometimes they stop, sometimes they submit it all the way through. And in the intervening period, we determined that in order to have the most reports available on the government publications portal, we needed to outreach to every single entity and require their reports to be submitted along with the appropriate metadata so things could be searched. And now we are at 100% compliance with the mayoral agencies. Um, so I think the result of that 
outreach and survey produced what we hoped to be the conclusion, which is uh, full participation. And then the report that the municipal librarian is doing is, is basically a timetable for when to expect the next set of reports and a way to manage the flow of information into the portal. I'd like to wrap up uh, in this age of uh, document destruction uh, being a very popular word and uh, document destruction policies being one of the things people uh, now Google more than anything else, something that us employment lawyers are very familiar with, but the general public had not previously been. Goal 2C is disposal of all records according to their scheduled retention period. We now kind of live in a world where we no longer need to dispose of as many records because they can just be scanned and we don't need to retain the digital copy and to the extent uh, it is very inexpensive and our, our storage space in the cloud is almost limitless. Um, can you talk a little bit about this according to the PMMR in fiscal year 2014, uh, we disposed of 11,282 uh, records and uh, in fiscal year 15 for the four month period we disposed of 2,695. So how does that work and are we still maintaining digital copies or are we deleting the digital copies in addition to the physical copies? The, um, the metrics in the report are largely based on um, historical practices throughout the city, which means that they're based on hard copies. Um, and the, the way the process works is that every agency has a retention schedule that gives the, the length of time any particular series of records should be retained. When the documents hit the end of their retention period, the commissioner of the agency sends a destruction request that is reviewed by the Department uh, of Records and Information Services and then is reviewed by the law department and then comes back to the Department of Records and Information Services for the archivist to determine whether or not those records have historical value, in which case instead of being shredded, they're moved to the archives. Um, and that process is, is very cumbersome and it is one of the processes that we are reviewing and we, will pr we propose changing in our upcoming initiative. The, one of the, the gaps in the process is that for the law department review and sign off, there is, um, you know, they, they have many divisions and each division sometimes has to look at the destruction request, which is, it just takes them a lot longer to, to be able to complete that given the complexity of all the litigation they're dealing with. The, would you be, as you can reconsider how you uh, quantify the uh, PMMR, I think a critical indicator would be a question of how many documents we're requesting to destroy and how many of them are being historically preserved versus destroyed and um, just having some sort of reporting to understand. So I would just love to learn a little bit more. Are we talking about payroll records and just copies of people's pay stubs or are we talking about um, something larger uh, and just what types of things are we destroying, why and what things are we type, trying to preserve and determining cannot be destroyed and for what reasons. So I'd love to learn more about that as sure. um, we go sure. through it. And just overall, thank you for your great work on the portal and thank you for pursuing um, the, the open foil and everything else and look forward to continuing to work together. Great work. Thank you very much.